Yeah. I've been trying to get my head around this accident report for several weeks now, and I still don't get it. Is there any damage to the bridge or, or to the fence leading up to the bridge that would indicate a car went over the side there? You've been able to see that out there? That's one of the interesting things. There's no physical evidence that would uh, indicate he went off somewhere over the bridge. There are areas where he could have plunged off between the bridges, but of course, that's just speculation at this point. We'll just have to see what lawmen come up with. If it wasn't an accident, how did the car get into the water? It could have been rolled in from the side, or when no cars were around at the dead of night, it could have been dropped in by helicopter using the nearby Air Force base that was 20 miles away. It feels really weird trying to use an automatic on the other side of the road. What is that arrow on your dashboard? The arrow on the dashboard tells us to, to stay right, because as British people, we're always liable to drift off to the left, as I've found several times from going around just this car park. So this is our last interview. Who is it? We're off to see the private investigator, Dennis O'Keefe. He's done over 12,000 cases over a long lifetime, and he claims that he knows exactly what happened to Gary DeVore I've had a lot of stories written about me. Usually, they misquoted me. As a matter of fact, the National Enquirer totally fabricated the entire story and attributed it to me. I was very upset. If you misquote me, I'm going to nail you. All right? I'll just I'll make, make that very blunt. This was not a homicide. They had a felony pullover in their place called Mr. Point. On the night Gary was driving home, there was a police incident at Vista Point. The police were stopping traffic at 2.10. Gary was traveling in the other direction at an earlier time, so this wasn't thought to have affected him. They closed down both sides of the freeway. And there were six police cars the point is, they reported that the freeway was closed at 210, right? Well, how long does it take to close the freeway? First, you got to stop the cars. Got to zigzag, get all the cars slowed down, and stop them. And they got to go out and put their, their flares out. That's 20 minutes, isn't it? 25 minutes. Back that off from 210. What do you have? 145? So Dennis is saying Gary would have seen a blockade. You're tired. You're another hour and a half or two hours from home. What would you do? So you might turn around. Is that what you're saying? That's right. Why not? Of course, his wife, he had a gun in the car. So he turned around and went against oncoming traffic. That's right. How do you explain some of the other uh, bigger questions or oh, inconsistencies. The, the, the hands. Oh, yeah. When he went off in the water, boom, what do you think the airbag did? Went off? Yeah. Where, where, where are his hands? On the wheel. On the steering wheel. And the airbag goes, boom. My hands are like here. Hit the water, boom. There's my hands. I drown. And little fishes come by, and they start nibbling. Maybe one or two two bones went with them. Oh, what is it? What, why do I, why do I care? I don't, why do I care? Tell me why I care. Why do you care? Why is that this wrong? I don't know. He um, became 
like the acclaimed investigative journalist, you know, that would do his self, sense of self worth and pride. Obviously, that would be enormous for that. And, you know, he'll expose someone. And, that, and in terms of career-wise, then, you know, he'll be recognised then and he might be able to find work, paid work more easily. I feel a bit lame in being involved. I think he's made bad decisions about his priorities and he should have prioritised um, us and our life over some research that I see as a hobby. You know, perhaps we could have like a nicer house and be happy and, you know, just have a normal kind of life instead of having one that's really like unconventional. Finally, I thought we had an answer, and the film would slowly begin turning back to Matt's life. It's clear, page 95 of the CHP report, it's not known whether the closure of the northbound traffic lanes of State Route 14 was a factor in the collision. How do, but how do we miss this? Because this suggests that O'Keefe's explanation is just... He, he's made a complete answer there. <laughs> really? It's clear, it's in black and white. Matt had changed his mind again. Apparently the roadblock was only on one side of the freeway. So it would not have affected Gary. Have you got my lighter? No. You right? Yeah, fine. You go, it's wobbly. The aqueduct and hay peel. All right, hang on. Well. We're off to go and see the aqueduct, which is the main reason for coming to California, really. Um, to actually... Oh, I don't know how I feel about it. Um... <sighs> I've changed my mind pretty much every day about the likelihood of a conspiracy. And Will keeps telling me that it's not good for the film. Will also keeps asking me questions about Sue and the kids, as though he's constantly thinking of storylines. Missing home? Are you missing Sue and the kids? How's it feel so far away from home? I'm worried about what he's going to put in the film. 